Welcome to Happy World TV's Happy Talk Talk. I invited today very big gentleman, <laughs> Mr. Christopher Luxon, who is national candidate in uh, botany for the 2020 general election. Hello, Christopher. How are you, Tony? Thank you for good. having me today. It's mm, great to be with you. Very good. You look very well. Oh, thank you. I feel very well. I've been mm. really enjoying this uh, change of career for a bit, mm. so it's been fun. So, yeah. COVID-19 changed mostly. Mm. And uh, everywhere in New Zealand. Mm. How did you spend uh, your, your uh, lockdown period of time? Yeah, well, lockdown's always very busy for me, actually, oh. uh, because I end up trying to help businesses that often are caught with travel exemptions. So this mm. last lockdown, there was a lot of businesses in East Tamaki mm. that had workers that lived in Pocono, and they needed to come across the southern border to work in, in these places. Um, we spend a lot of time actually reaching out, particularly to older people, and mm. just seeing whether they need any help. Uh, and how they're feeling. Sometimes they get very lonely, it's understandable, mm. and so just putting calls into them. And then talking to people like the head of the CEO of the DHB or the, the local medical people, um, also call off on the principals of the schools and just see how they're all going. So you're actually very busy with Zoom meetings and yes. telephone calls. Mm. Uh, and then occasionally I got out and I actually managed to demolish a fence on my property, which was actually good, <laughs> good, good, good therapy as well. So yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, COVID-19 changed even the date of uh, general election. Absolutely, from yes. From 19th September to 17th of October. October. That's yeah. right. So we've got another four weeks that we've had mm. added to it. I think that was a good decision. Okay. It was an important decision because I think uh, the public is not really in a mood for campaigning or getting engaged on the big issues and the, and the big differences that the parties may have. And so I think it was a good decision by the Prime Minister mm. to, to push it back. Mm. Uh, so, but leader of the National Party, uh, Judith Collins, wanted sometime in November or even next year. Yeah, look, I, I'm sure there was a range of opinions from the different political leaders. Yes. What was important was they actually got to a decision, and uh, you know we're all living with the decision, and it's and we've got to get on now and and actually tell people in New Zealand why it's so mm. important they have to mm. change this government if they want a better future. Mm. But uh, she's. Uh, she looks happy now. Who, who's that? The, uh, Judith Collins. Oh, well, I know Judith well. She's a great politician mm. and she's formidable. Mm. Um, she's also out, you know, she's got a lot of great experience because mm. I think she's probably managed in excess of 10 major portfolios over her career. And the key thing about Judith is, and why she's so good for this time, is that she is very clear. Mm. You know, she's black or white, yes or no. Oh, okay. And when you're trying to be in a crisis like we're in, mm. uh, economic crisis and a mm. healthcare crisis, um, you really want good, clear leadership. Mm. There were big changes in uh, National Party internally. Yes, yeah, yeah. We've, uh, it'd be fair to say, I think, you know, we've, we've passed it now in the last month, we've come through that, but, you know, it was a pretty uh, rocky, uh, you know, few months with some poor behaviour and, and obviously mm. leadership changes as well. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing is that that has now finished and stopped, and I can tell you, you know, Judith's got the team very focused and very focused on the future, and mm. I think, um, you know, I'm really quite excited about where we are, and I just, you know, as someone who's new to politics coming in from outside the system, uh, when I look at the calibre of the people in the National Party team up and down the country, mm. I think we've got some excellent new candidates, but we've also got some really good experience sitting mm. there as well. Mm. Could you tell me some uh, major changes of uh, National Party's uh, policies or something like well, that? Well, look, I think, you know, the one, there's two things that I was, you know, very pleased to see. One was a much uh, more assertive uh, border control, uh, mm. border security policy. Yeah. I think that's really important. You know, what we cannot have is these yo-yo lockdowns. Mm. You know, just in Auckland this last, uh, t you know, two or three weeks, 
weeks. Every day we were losing 250 jobs, we mm. were losing $75 million of economic activity. Mm. And you just can't turn 1.6 million people into lockdown when you have a failure at the border, you know, or a failure somewhere in the system. Now, this is a hard thing to manage, there will be risk, but you actually, as I learned in aviation, you need to really go through and, and it's a, when, when an accident happens in aviation, it's a series of lots of little things all lining up a bit like Swiss cheese and the whole appears. And it's the same thing here, you know, we need to be really tough on, on that. And so making sure that we actually have a border protection agency mm. rather than lots of different departments doing their thing is important. Uh, making sure that we get a three day test before people come on board or tr return to New Zealand. The three day and 12 day compulsory tests. I think a lot smarter use of, of contact tracing. I think compulsory contact tracing for people that are actually working at the border, uh, DHB people interfacing with patients, you know, those things that when there is an outbreak, we can very quickly get on top of it. Mm -hmm. I know you were born in Christchurch. I was, and yes. And uh, come up to Auckland. Yes, yes. No, Could I you tell me uh, some yeah, of your early days? Yes, I was born in Christchurch and I came to Auckland as a seven-year-old mm. because my father worked for a company called Johnson & Johnson. Oh. So they made talcum powder and band-aids for when you cut your, cut your skin. Mm. And so um, we smelled great. I'm the oldest of three boys, but we, were, we, we always smelled terrific. And I lived out in Howick uh, in Cockle Bay and went to Cockle Bay Primary School and Howick Intermediate and St. Kent's and Howick College. Mm. And, uh, and then we went back to Christchurch where I finished off high school and on to university. Oh, yeah. And so, um, so I've got great memories of growing up in my electorate now of botany and my brother still lives there and we have lots of family friends there. And I also have a lot of ex New Zealand staff that work there and live there as well. So mm. um, it's pretty special to be able to represent botany. Mm. All of your families live in Auckland? No, I've, I've got my mum and dad are still um, living and working in, in Christchurch. Oh, okay. And my two younger brothers live here in Auckland, yes. Mm. Yeah. Many people will know that you are the former CEO of Air New Zealand. Yes, that's yeah. right. <laughs> no, it was great because Air New Zealand was a very special company. And, mm. you know, because you know that New Zealand, with five million people on two islands in the, in the you know, South Pacific, mm. is, is a long way away from the world. And you realise when you lead Air New Zealand that for New Zealand to be successful, it needs a, a thriving Air New Zealand. And likewise, uh, for New Zealand to be successful, it needs New Zealand to be in a good place. And so you get very involved in the New Zealand Inc. issues, which is why I was chairing uh, the Prime Minister's Business Advisory Council for Jacinda Ardern, uh, why I was involved in you know, the New Zealand China Council or the Australian New Zealand Leadership Forums. Um, for those sorts of things. So, no, it was a great company. Uh, yeah. we, had a, we had a great run for seven or eight years that I was mm. there. Uh, but it's a real people business and you learn, um, you know, I can't be an engineer or a pilot, but mm. actually I've got to play my role. And it's really a team sport, you know, about, um, yes, I'm the captain of the team and I've got to set the vision, but actually there's amazing people in that company. And mm. so it's sad watching what's happening now because it's a tough time for them, yeah. but they have great people and I know they'll get through it. Mm. Every airline company is struggling at the moment. Globally, it's really yeah. tough. And the great thing is that Air New Zealand was one of the top uh, mm. performing airlines going into COVID and yeah. um, best performing commercially, customer-wise mm. and, and culturally. Mm. You're a candidate uh, in botany and uh, many Koreans and Chinese people live that area. Uh, I know you are very interested in uh, multicultural things. Yes, I, I am because um, one is I'm, I'm so I chose to run in botany, and I was mm. really interested in part because of the diversity that's in oh, botany. Okay. Yeah. It's the most diverse electorate in the country. Over fifty percent of people were born overseas, mm. and so it's been a real privilege over the last year when I meet with the Korean community, the Indian community, Chinese community, Filipino community where you see these amazing people that have been here four months or four years, mm. but they've left what they left at home and they've come to New Zealand and they've worked incredibly hard, mm. incredibly hard. Yeah. Uh, I met a, uh, a, a gentleman from the Middle East when I was out door knocking and he had come to New Zealand four years earlier, mm. but he'd taken on three jobs and he'd just secured his deposit to buy his first house in Flatbush. Mm. And I thought, mm. that's really fantastic. So. Um, the one thing that pulls all the immigrant communities together is um, you know, ambition and aspiration. They want to get ahead for themselves, their family and their community, and they work really hard and it's very, very inspiring mm. um, and, and, and you know, a great role model, I think. Mm. That's why you might be interested in immigration policy as well. 
Absolutely. I mean, the challenge we have right now is that the job that we have to do on immigration is, before we can do anything else, is we have to make sure that that border is really safe. Mm. Because failing to do that doesn't mean that we, if we can't do that job well, we can't do anything else that we need to do. And then we need to make sure that our immigration policy actually supports our economic plan and our agenda going forward. Mm. And I can tell you there's some tension there because, you know, there's uh, some New Zealanders that struggle with if we, if we have immigration coming through and we're not building enough infrastructure to support it, that's a problem. Um, likewise, if we're going to have recessionary times and higher levels of unemployment, you know, that can be challenging. But I can tell you I've been up and down the country all through East Tamaki and there are so many businesses that need um, immigrants, skilled immigrants, to be able to come into this country to be able to make those businesses work. I was down recently in Fokatane at a place called Extreme Boats, who make aluminium boats. Mm. And they're doing a great job of trying to make boat building an attractive industry for young New Zealanders to come and join. But they also do need to hire people from overseas in mm. order to be able to do very specialist jobs mm. like welding and precision welding uh, and a bunch of things like that. So, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's in manufacturing or horticulture or agriculture or farming uh, or, or, or hospitality. There's a real need for these businesses that, that, that need, need immigrants. Mm. I know you might have bigger dreams in the near future. Really? Uh, <laughs> I think I know what you're getting. For, for making New Zealand stronger. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, um, I've thought very deeply about this decision because it's not as usual in New Zealand that you leave a business career, um, where I, which I loved uh, doing, and I had a great job, uh, mm. to be able to go off and do politics. But I do feel, having lived overseas for 16 years and seen the good and the bad, of lots of different systems, that New Zealand is a really special place. Mm. And very, we're very lucky to live here. Mm. But for New Zealand to continue to do well, we've got to rise to some big challenges that we have, but we also have some huge opportunities. Yeah. And I think that requires a more strategic set of skills. And I think when you come from being a CEO at Unilever, where I worked before I was at, at New Zealand, and now in New Zealand, uh, you come at it thinking about how do you set a vision for people to follow? How do you solve problems? Um, how do you work with multiple stakeholders? Um, how do you get things done fundamentally? And I think that's what New Zealand needs right now is we, need the, we don't need just talk, we need action and we need to get some things done. Yeah. And so, um, so I, think it's, you know, I think it's really important. That's why I want to come and, and come and do the very best I can uh, to make the biggest contribution I can um, so that I can get things done for New Zealand and be part of a team that wants to do that. Well, there's uh, challenges. There's a uh, way. Sorry, challenges and, and opportunities. Opportunity. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because you know we have some big challenges, particularly in the next five to six years. You know, mm. as we work through the impacts of COVID, which will be with us for some time, uh, and build a more resilient economy, a more resilient society, a more resilient mm. environment. Uh, but equally, there is massive opportunities. You know, mm. you know there still is a massive trend of growing middle classes throughout the Asia Pacific region. You know, the world has economically and culturally and socially moved from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And for years we've talked about New Zealand being at the end of the world and irrelevant, but actually we should rethink it. We're right in the middle of where all the growth and all the activity is happening. Mm. And New Zealand has a lot of the products and services and the environment that, that people want to, to want to have. So, um, so I think we've got a great future. It's about mindset and it's about ambition and it's about aspiration and wanting to be a world-class country, mm. Uh, mm. which we are, mm. but how we, how we continue to punch above our weight and do well in the world is really important. Mm. Okay. Why do people support national? Well, I think the same reason I joined Nation, the National Party, which mm. is it's about the values, mm. you know, and the values are very clearly around personal responsibility, mm. about equal opportunity for mm. all, about helping others uh, in the community, uh, certainly about, you know, if you work hard and you should enjoy the rewards of your success. Mm. And so those values are what I ultimately aligned with deciding to join the National Party. And I know that's the same for many of the immigrant communities, because in many ways, their values are in fact National Party values. They live them, they, mm. they, they practice them, they raise their families and are living with those values in mind. Mm. Various backgrounds and experiences. 
the, what, what, that I have or, or, or that they have? Your members. Yes. Uh, national members. That's right. And I think that's the other thing is that the National Party has a broader set of experiences mm. of real world experience. Mm. And I think that's important, you know, because often you can get these professional politicians who were at university doing student body politics, mm. who became advisors to ministers or MPs to become MPs or ministers. And therefore all they know is the theoretical. They know Wellington, mm. but they're lost in a bubble. They're not enough there's not enough diversity in their experience or their thinking to be able to make a contribution. And I think what New Zealand needs right now, I can tell you across the National Party, the new candidates I've met, the existing candidates we have, we have a really broad range of people mm. with a broad set of experiences. And so they're more grounded into what real people are actually mm. thinking and feeling. Mm. Are there any virus specialists? Well, I think Dr. Shane Retty has been outstanding, you know, mm. because he's he's under he's understood the medical um, scenario incredibly well, um, mm. and he's he made some very powerful contributions already. So, I think if you listen to him talking on on the different TV shows or radio shows, mm. I think you'll be very impressed. He, he's, a, he's he's been very very smart, and I think he's added a lot and been very constructive mm. in the things that he's trying to improve and advocate for. Mm. Because of COVID-19, we are facing the biggest economic crisis in generations. Uh, do you have any good suggestions? Yeah, look, I mean, there's lots that we need to do, but the two big things that will help us tremendously is one, investing in our infrastructure across this country. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some major challenges where we have not been able to you know, we need a master plan of what we're going to do, we need to fund it in a right way, we need to change the RMA legislation in particular, mm. Mm. and we need to actually work out are we any good at actually getting this stuff done and how do we get it done. And so there's a, there's a big vision around that, from, certainly from the National Party, if we just take our $31 billion over 10 years for the Upper North Island um, mm. vision, mm. which is really about how do you make it the most dynamic region in Australasia, linking Whangarei with Auckland, with Hamilton, with Tauranga, mm. and how do you invest in rail and mass transit and some roads along the way as well. Mm. Um, so that's one thing on infrastructure. The other big thing really is around small businesses, and because our belief as in the National Party is that we have to grow the economy, we have to expand the pie mm. so that we can get more money to more of our people and, more, and, and higher wages and higher salaries. And we, that means not doing, we have to spend money, we'll have to borrow money because of the times to stimulate the economy, but it doesn't mean borrowing so much money that we're wasting money or wasteful spending. Um, but it does mean that we have to make sure that, that small business are going to be the people, given they employ so many people and they're a big part of our economy, that we have to give them confidence to invest in more capital, mm. to hire more people, uh, and it's going to be private enterprise that will power us out of this. And so you need a government that's got some very friendly uh, and very good practical policies for small businesses. Mm. And so I'd encourage you, you know, jump on our website and look at our small business package that we announced last week, because there's some very practical things in there around tax, lower tax costs and compliance costs, removing red tape, um, overhauling some legislation, and, and access to capital, uh, and a number of things that actually are incredibly helpful. So they're practical, pragmatic things that, again, because National Party people understand small business, they know what they need, and we can actually unlock those things so that those people feel enough stability and certainty that they can invest in the way that we want them to do to grow their companies. Mm. Finally, I have one more question. <laughs> uh, in this general election, the government will ask people about the use of cannabis. What uh, do you think about that? I'm against it, uh, personally, oh. and the reason is very simple, is that um, when I left here in New Zealand, mm. I was actually approached uh, by some headhunters about going to work for some cannabis companies around the world. Mm. And the reason was they wanted me to do my background before here in New Zealand was I worked for a big global company called Unilever. And Unilever sells Ben and Jerry's ice cream, Dove soap, a lot of products. Mm. And essentially they wanted me to create more demand and create new products, marijuana products. And the second thing I'd say is as an employer at Air New Zealand, I can tell when someone has been abusing alcohol because it's in their blood test or in their testing. But marijuana stays in the system for up to three weeks. And when you're in a safety sensitive industry like aviation, it's very, very difficult to you, know, you don't want an engineer who could be affected by marijuana mm. uh, working on an aircraft, right? Mm. Because when an accident happens or oh. something happens, you can't afford that mistake, mm. right? So it's very difficult from an employer's point of view. 
And I think the third thing is just having seen the implication of um, legalization around the world, you know, world uh, it's just, it just, you go to these places like San Francisco and Seattle and we've got enough challenges with unemployment, with youth uh, mental health, uh, to throw addiction into the, uh, I just, it just doesn't feel like it's the right decision for you know, a generation of young people in my view. So I appreciate others might have other views, but you know, for me I look at it from a, it will increase consumption, it has got issues around safety sensitive industries and as an employer it's quite difficult to deal with mm. uh, and I just don't think it's the right thing for our young people. Mm. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate the time. You've got a lot of questions in. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, thank nice you. to see you.